we are working on unit three, lesson three, exponents that are unit fractions. So unit fraction just means one half, one third, the numerator is one. Um, we're gonna be writing square roots and cube roots as exponents. So if you think about what it means to square a number or how we write that, um, we write it as a number squared. And when we square root something, we know that the symbol for square root looks like this. When we cube something, we take it to a power of three. And when we do a cube root, we have an index of three here. And so you might be wondering, well, why does this one have a three here, but this one doesn't? Why shouldn't we write a two here? So it's kind of the same thing if we were to write x. We know that there's a coefficient in front of it, but if there's no coefficient there, we just automatically assume that the coefficient is one. So if we see this radical sign and there's no number here, we automatically assume that it's a square root. We just don't write it because it's kind of the default. So we're gonna be talking about cube roots and square roots today. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at this card sort. And somehow I have two cards sorted correctly already. Not really sure how that happened. All right, so I'm gonna take the ones that have exponents and I'm gonna move them off to the side here. And then I'm gonna take the ones that are just um, numbers and I'm gonna move those off to the other side here. And then we're just gonna start matching. Ooh, I see how that happened. Let's pause this. Okay, on we go. So we're gonna take all of these and we're gonna move them over here and we're gonna take all these and we're gonna move them over here. And so we have all the numbers on one side and we have all the exponents on the other side and we're just gonna kind of talk about which ones go where and why. So the first one that somebody shouted out in class today was, well, I know two squared is four. So let's check it out. Is two squared equal to four? Oh, by golly, it is. Okay, so we're going to put that one there. And then somebody else said, oh, well, two cubed, I know, is eight. So let's talk about that one. Oh, bingo. And somebody else asked, well, why isn't two cubed six? Remember, you're not taking the base times the exponent. You're taking the base, the times itself, and the exponent tells us how many times. So this would be two times two times two. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. All right, so now we have four cards sorted correctly, and I'm just going to move these off to the side so they don't bother us anymore. So here's what we have left. And this is where things started to kind of get interesting. So there was a guess that 2 to the 0 should actually be 0, but since there's no 0 over here, we weren't sure how to proceed. So then we started looking at these cards here and how they got paired up. And we started talking about fractions. And one of the conjectures that we had was, well, there's three negatives over here and there's three fractions over here. So, hmm, what if two squared is four, what would that mean about two to the negative two power? Maybe that's one over four. And if I know that two cubed is eight, maybe two to the negative third power is one over eight. So we decided to try those two next. So we took two to the negative two and we said, let's try it with one fourth. That works. So now we think, oh, well maybe this is gonna work for the one eighth as well. So we took two cubed and sure enough, two to the negative third is one eighth. So then we have these other fractions here. And so it was, oh, well, two to the negative one and two to the first power. Well, they kind of have the same exponents, just that one of them is positive and one of them is negative. So if I can find the same number that are kind of like reciprocals of each other, so two to the first power might be two, and it is, and two to the negative one power is one half, and it is. So the last one was kind of where we got stuck. 
and we couldn't really figure out why anything to the power of 0 or 2 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So here's what we came up with. When we um, multiply bases that are the same, we add those exponents together to simplify that expression. So if I have x cubed times x to the fifth, I would do x to the three plus five, which is x to the eighth. If, however, I have a fraction like x to the fifth over x cubed, I would not add those exponents, I would subtract those exponents. So I would do x to the 5 minus 3, which is equal to x squared. Well, what happens if the numerator and the denominator are exactly the same? So following that same rule that we had before, we would have x to the 5 minus 5, which is x to the 0. But we also know that if we divide a number by itself, like 5 divided by 5, or 10 divided by 10, or negative 32 divided by negative 32, that that answer is equal to 1. So anytime that we see a number to the power of 0, it's always going to be equal to 1. So based on the previous slide, um, we want to give an approximation of 2 to the 1 half. So remember, we said that 2 to the power of 0 is equal to 1, and we said 2 to the power of 1 is equal to 2. So our exponent here would be halfway in between these two exponents. So we would have 2 to the 1 half. And so what would really make sense for 2 to the 1 half power to be if 2 to the 0 is 1 and 2 to the first power is 2? So we talked in class about how, well, 1.5 kind of makes sense because it's halfway in between 1 and 2, just like 1 half is halfway in between 0 and 1. So we're going to give our approximation as about 1.5. So then we decided that we were going to graph. And so most of these we've already done. This was in our card sort. So we know that negative 2, really what we're doing here, we're going to take this function here, we're going to graph this function, and we're going to use these as our input values. So what we're really doing is taking this and making it our exponent. So this would be the same thing as 2 to the power of negative 2. And we did that in the card sort earlier. That would be 1.5. Wow, that's not what I wanted to do. That would be 1 over 4 or 0.25. If I did the same thing with negative 1, I would get 2 the power of negative 1, which again would just be 1 over, two. 1 over 2. We know that anything to the power of 0 is always 1, and then 2 to the first power is 2, 2 to the second power is 4, 2 to the third power is 8. So we're just taking each one of these outputs, each one of these y values, and multiplying it by 2 each time. So now, we have this set of ordered pairs that we can graph. So we're going to come over here. We're going to go to negative 2. Now, each one of these horizontal lines here represents 2. So if you think about halfway in between here would be 1. And so a quarter is just going to be like barely over this line right here. So negative 2 and a quarter. Oh, sorry, that was really bad. Negative 2 and a quarter. Negative 1 and 1 half. 0 and 1, that's going to be halfway, because 1 is halfway between 0 and 2. 1 and 2, that's going to be right on this 
intersection point right here, 2 and 4, 3 and 8, 4 and 16, and 5 and 32. So again, if we were to graph this, I'm just going to kind of draw this in here. So that might make it a little bit easier for us to see. Sorry for my really, really wonky line. I apologize for that. Okay. If we were to use this line to approximate what um, two to the one half is, again, these numbers here on the x axis are all my exponents. So one half would be halfway in between zero and one. So if we take one half and we go up here, my line is a little bit off, but you can see that it would be in between one and two. The y value would be in between one and two. So once again, I could say it's about 1.5. Okay, so now we're going to get to the part where we use those exponent rules that we that we went over that we reviewed in lesson one. When you have a base that is the same, we add our exponents. So we have two to the power of one half times two to the power of one half. And we just want to simplify that so that we just have the one base. We don't like repeat bases if we have the same one. So we know that when we have the same base, we add the exponents together. And we know that 1 half plus 1 half is 1. So this is 2 to the first power, which is really the same thing as 2. So 2 to the power of 1 half times 2 to the power of 1 half is equal to 2. So what other positive number squared is equal to 2? Well, why would I care about that? Well, really what I'm saying here is that when I multiply these two together, any time that you, that you multiply a number times itself, you're squaring it. So really what we're doing is we're taking 2 to the 1 half power and we're squaring it. And again, with those exponent rules, we know that 1 half times 2 is equal to 2. So the reason that we're asking what positive number squared is 2 is because that's what this is saying. We're looking for the number that when we multiply it times itself, it becomes 2. So let's think about some other numbers. What if we had 4 to the power of 1 half times 4 to the power of 1 half? Again, we know that 1 half plus 1 half is equal to 1 whole. And that is equal to 4. So if we have 4 to the 1 half power times 4 to the 1 half power, we get 4. So really what we're saying is we're saying a number times itself is equal to 4, or x squared is equal to 4. So what number times itself is equal to 4? Well, that's 2. And 2 is the square root of 4. We could replace any perfect square in here. We could do 9, we could do 16, we could do 25, 36, 121, 169. All it's saying is that if these two numbers have the same base and the same exponent, they're the same number. And so when you multiply a number times itself, you get just the base. And so the number that we square to get 2 is the square root of 2. So 2 to the 1 half power has to be equal to the square root 
of 2. So let's think about this a little bit differently. Remember earlier we talked about when we have a square root, the index here is really a 2. So if I'm taking the square root of x, it's the same thing as x to the 1 half power. The exponent on this x would be a 1. And so we write this as 1 over 2. That's how we would write our exponent. These two things are interchangeable. They mean the exact same thing. I could write the square root of 13 is equal to 13 to the power of 1 half. Remember the exponent on 13 is 1. The index on the radical is 2. So square root of 13 is the same thing as 13 to the 1 half power. How about 67? Okay, 67. Remember the exponent on 67 would be 1. The index on a square root, the default is 2. So if there's no number here, we automatically assume that it's a 2. And we get 67 to the power of 1 half. So now let's take that and let's try and apply that same thought process to what would be the meaning of 2 to the 1 third power. Well, x to the 1 half power means that we're taking the square root. 13 to the 1 half power means that we're taking the square root of 13. 67 to the 1 half power means that we're taking the square root of 67. So the meaning of 2 to the 1 third would be that we are taking the cube root of 2. And if the index is anything other than a 2, we have to write it here. So again, here's the index, here's the exponent. Okay, and all that means is that we would need three of these numbers to multiply together to get so there's some number that we can multiply together three times itself that would give us 2. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of examples here. This is our nth root. Um, this is actually switched around. So this would be if a is equal to b to the 1 um, over n power, then a is equal to um, the nth root of b. So this should actually be a is equal to b to the 1 over n power. If this number here is a 2, we call it a square root. And if this number here is a, is a 3, then we call it a cube root. So for the exponential form and the radical form, so we would have a is equal to b to the 1 half, and that's equal to the square root of b. And if it's cube root, we say a is equal to b to the 1 third, which is equal to the cube root of b. So notice that when we write the square root, we don't actually put the index on there. But if it's a cube root or above, it's if this number down here is a 3 or above, then we make sure to write this index here. So now we want to generalize these exponents. So if we keep in mind this rule right here, where does the n go? The n becomes the index. The exponent, because it's a 1, we don't really write. So if we want to write 5 to the 1 fourth power using radicals, this value would be our n. So we would do the fourth root of 5. If we wanted to write 5 to the 1 third power, again, our index would be 3 because that's the denominator of our exponent, and we keep the base underneath the radical sign. So 
So for each one of these, we want to evaluate the expression. On this one, we're looking for the fourth root of 81. So these two, remember, are exactly the same thing. So what we're looking for, what this expression means, is that we're looking for a number that we can multiply times itself four times, that's what this means, um, so that it equals 81. So I'm just going to do um, a little base change here. So instead of having a base of 81, I know that if I square 9, I get the same thing as 81. So I'm just going to take out this piece right here, and I'm going to replace it with 9 squared. So I have 9 squared to the 1 4th power. And if you watched the previous lesson, you would know that you multiply when you have a power to a power. So 9 to the 2 fourths is the same thing as 9 to the 1 half power. And we already know that 9 to the 1 half power means the square root of 9. And so that would mean that the cube or the fourth root of 81 would be equal to 3. Well, we may not be able to do the same thing here, but I know that 32 is the same thing as 16 times 2, and I have this both to the 1 -fifth power, because this is the fifth root, this also means the fifth root, we're just taking this index and turning it into the denominator. So I know 16 is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. I know that 16 is 4 times 4. And then if I take that times 2, that would give me 32. And I know that 4 is the same thing as 2 squared. So I have 2 squared times 2 squared times 2, all of this to the 1 -fifth power. And 2 plus 2 plus 1 is 2 to the 5th, and if I take that to the 1 -fifth power, 5 times 1 -fifth is 1, and so the 5th root of 32 would be 2. So I'm going to do kind of the same thing here. I'm going to rewrite this as 9 to the 1 -third power times 3 to the 1 -third power. And I'm going to do a little bit of undistributing here. So we know that any time that we have an exponent outside a set of parentheses, we can distribute that exponent. So if these two have the same exponent, or if they have the same index right here, we can really kind of do this undistribute here. And now we can multiply these two together. So 27 to the 1 3rd power, we're looking for a number that we can multiply times itself three times to get 27. And the number that we would use would be 3. Okay, so same principle here. We have 25 to the 1 4th times 100 to the 1 4th times 4 to the 1 4th. Whoops, 1 4th. So we're going to undistribute all of these, and we get 25 times 100 times 4, and all of this is to the 1 4th power because they all have 1 4th. It's kind of like the greatest common factor for exponents, right? So if we multiply 25 times 4, we get 100. And if we multiply 100 times 100, we get 
10,000, and we want 10,000 to the one-fourth power. So what we're looking for is we're looking for a number that we can multiply times itself four times that would equal 10,000. And that number would be 10. Last one. We just want to write this using rational exponents. So we just want to basically combine this. So we know that when we have a power raised to a power, we keep the base and we multiply the exponents together. And we know that when we multiply fractions, we just multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. And I can turn this into a fraction too just by putting a one under it. So I would take one times three, which is three, and I would take four times one, which is four. So this would be two to the three-fourths power. This one we want to do using radicals, and this is the same problem up here, so I know that this is two to the three-fourths power. And so to change it from um, rational exponents to a radical, I keep the base and the exponent underneath the radical sign, and the, exponent, the denominator of my exponent becomes the index of my radical sign.